throw some shade your way, right? And, you know, it used to bother me, but now I'm just like, it does still kind of piss me off, but I'm just like, excuse my language, but fuck it. special episode of The Pursuit. Uh, this is the first one excluding my dad, who doesn't count, to where I have a guest on the new uh, format of The Pursuit. And I've got uh, Dr. David Roney on with me. If you are on Twitter and in the finance community, you definitely know uh, Dr. Roney. But if not, he is a phenomenal human being. I got to spend about an hour with him last year just on a Zoom and hearing his story. And we're not going to dive into that today. Maybe that is a, a future episode of The Pursuit. There's some great podcast with our buddy Jamie Hopkins. You've got one coming out. By the time this gets released um, on the Altruist platform, you can check that out as well. But the reason I asked David to join me, and I call him David because he's told me before, don't call me doctor. So um, I always want to call him doctor. You put in the work, you respect there, but he told me to call him David. Um, was a tweet that he had last week. And um, I'm going to ask him more about it. But the reason I wanted to have him come on and talk about it is, as we go on this journey of following our passions and on this pursuit, Inevitably, you're going to get some type of feedback from the public or friends or family that might deter you from continuing on. And for lack of a better way of explaining it, as you know, David said last week, fuck them. Like, there's going to be certain things where you need to keep on going and tune that noise out. And before I have um, David give us a brief intro of himself, there's two quotes that really jumped out to me that will hit, and then uh, we'll go through it. Is at one point you said. Nothing I will do will make other people happy. And then my happiness doesn't depend on your happiness. And I think those are really powerful comments I want to lead us into. But I've been enough rambling right now, about a minute in. David, why don't you real quick give your intro, how you would introduce yourself, and then we'll talk about this tweet that you had, what sparred it, and, and kind of what people should take from it as they go on their pursuit. Yeah, so I'm Dr. Dave Roney. Thanks for having me on, man. It's always good to talk to you, man. Uh, um... So I'm a general robotic surgeon. I use the DaVinci platform. I didn't start out this way. I didn't come from a silver spoon. Grew up super humble, poor, uh, living in a car at one point. Uh, I was lucky enough to be able to go play college basketball and run track at the United States Naval Academy. I started in a nuclear community and then switched over to cryptology and then became a doctor, right? It means, all that means is I'm a masochist and I'm a glutton from partner machine, right? I keep going back to school. But... <clears throat> the biggest thing for me is why I, I'm active on Twitter is because I, I believe that financial advice should be cheaper, right? I, we should all be able to get financial advice, quality financial advice that we need, right? Because there's a profession that studies this stuff daily that can really benefit us all to learn from. But unfortunately, the industry doesn't work out that way, right? The numbers don't work out that way. The other thing is I'm a big, huge proponent for uh, being able, just like our friend Tyrone Ross says, like, you know, be a voice for the voiceless, right? Because I used to be the voiceless and then all of a sudden I managed to get some success and now people freaking listen to me. It's kind of crazy to me. But, and I'm a huge proponent of financial literacy because I, I, quite frankly, I didn't grow up with financial literacy. I didn't even know what the effing term was until uh, someone was like, oh, well, you need to learn about uh, this and learn about that and with the rule of 72 and compound interest. And I'm just like, what the hell are you talking about? So now what I do is I share my life, man. There's not a lot of people who look like me who are walking around, right? Who've done the things that I've done and have come from my background. But I know there's other people who have similar type scenarios that they're struggling to get through because I struggle. And so I don't want them struggling as hard because I 100% I believe that success in this country should not be as hard as it is. So let's go to your tweet, because I think that some of your experience, I would imagine, and what I could gather from what you said and what we've talked about before and other conversations I've heard you had, your experience of not very many people looking like you that are doing what you're doing, I'm sure that that's some of the comments that come and some of the, the hate that you might get. But we don't have to get the specifics of what the exact comment or conversation was, but in that moment, like I'm going to link to uh, the video and I might even try to figure out how to put some of it into the video as an intro outro. I, I could feel the passion behind the comments. It wasn't like you were just getting on to complain about your Tesla battery like you did today, <laughs> which I feel that pain. Uh, it's but like, painful, man. Painful. But it was like you could feel the passion and the emotion behind it that obviously this wasn't the first time. And 
you could tell it was more of a, a video you shot sure to get some of the frustration out of yourself, but I really believe that you were, you were sharing it for other people to realize you just can't worry about what other people think about you within reason. I mean, you've got to worry about your spouse and your kids and things of that sort, but even then still, you've got to take some of that with a grain of salt and, and still stay true to who you are. So again, without the, the specifics, what prompted that and kind of what were you hoping from with that, that tweet? Yeah, so you know, it's interesting. Every morning on my drive in, I try and listen to podcasts, right? And um, really, it's like this delicate balance. In order to, I put in just as much work at learning finance as I do medicine, which is crazy, right? Because I spend all day doing medicine and I, I compartmentalize these things. So, like, in my downtime, I spend trying to, like, read different books. Like, I, have, I, I got books galore on my, uh, on my desk here where I'm just, like, trying to pick up stuff. And I'm trying to keep pace with the financial industry because I want to be able to share that knowledge, right? And so I was listening to The Compound, which is my Friday morning, and Packy McCormick on, is on, right? And uh, Josh Brown, they're talking about like the 100,000 subscribers and Packy McCormick saying now he's starting to get more trolls. And then Josh said something I 100% disagree with. He said that uh, basically you sort of just got to ignore everybody. Right. And I'm like, you, 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 you can and you can't. Right. Because not everybody's a troll. But at the same time, like there might be some constructive feedback that you can take in there. Right. That doesn't mean you have to F and listen to them. Right. Because majority of people, when you have an idea or you're doing something new, the reason why it's new is because other people haven't fucking done it. Right. They're not going to give you any good advice. Right. No one's going to encourage you to go out, spend your money on a risky thing. Right. Because if they, if they if you do under their advice and you look bad or you do bad, they're going to see that as, oh, crap, I might have caused that. Right. So the, the easiest thing to do is to be pessimistic. Majority of people outside of your circle. Right. And as we get older, our circles become closer. Right. The, the people outside of that, they aren't going to freaking encourage you. Right. And, and that's why I tell people you just got to fucking go and do it, man. Fuck everybody else. I'm being dead serious because the, there's going to be more people hating on you than there are supporting you. And the hate doesn't even matter. Right. Because they haven't done what you've done. And I, I, I've learned this stuff all the time. And one of my partners told me he was like, do you realize like you're already good? The fact that you look the way you look. And you're in these rooms and people are listening to you implies already that you're good at what you do. You don't have shit to prove to anybody else. Right. And so in regards to Packy McCormick, yeah, he, he's going to get some people hating on him. Right. But he's got a hundred fucking thousand subscribers for a reason. Right. That's not an accident. That's not fucking luck. He did that because there's some skill there that people want to hear. So. Fuck everybody else. Yeah, you can listen to it. You can look at it and take in the construction. But like majority of it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean you have to listen to it. Right. And it, it, it will make you feel like, oh, crap, man, this, you know, this is my baby. Right. I, I worked on this. Putting content out there and putting yourself out there is vulnerable as hell. Right. It is a vulnerable feeling. I remember when Jamie Hopkins and Jason Wink were encouraging me to put myself out there more. Put yourself out there. Put yourself out there. Uh, Tyler Olson, shout out to him, was like, hey, man, you got to do more videos. You got to do more videos. And I'm just like, man, you know, I started doing them. And then I would get like nasty messages in my DMs from people. I even had advisors go after me on Twitter. And I'm just like, hey, man, I'm just I'm just an innocent bystander showing you or, or, or sharing my experience and my thoughts because I can see things from a different perspective. And this is how it looks to me. Right. It's not like I'm uneducated. I'm a fucking surgeon. Right. I, not even that. Like, even if you take the surgery stuff away, I'm a cryptologist before. That. Like, it's not like I'm uneducated. I'm giving you an educated opinion. I'm not Joe Schmo off the street who you don't know for Adam. Like, I actually have credentials. And with that being said, like, I just realized, like, at first I was getting defensive about it. I'm just like, man, I don't even fucking know this person. He doesn't even know me. So what does it matter? And so what I do is I accept every single message and then I take it in under advisement and then go, okay, fine, move on. If it's not anything that can help me, I move on. And that's why I say fuck them because everybody's going to be upset with what you do, right? 
if you decide, hey, I'm, uh, you know, I got this dope marketing brand. I see the financial advisor hat, right? I got this dope marketing brand, and I got dope merch, and I got, and I'm putting it out there. How many people are going to be happy with that, right? There are going to be people who are going to be like, well, why is Justin putting out this merch? He's a financial advisor. He he should have. He doesn't need that income stream. It's very tacky. Fuck him, right? You want to know why you're putting out the merch? Because it's dope. Your wife has a uh, a clothing line. It's in your DNA, and you're good at marketing. Bam, done. Move on. And that's how I think about it. Yep. And I mean, and another reason I do it is then they should thank you for the shout out on, the, on the, the gear is that it's something I'm passionate about, which ties into pursue. I had a couple comments that as you were talking, it made me think one, there was a follow up comment that Josh had because I you know, compounds my Friday morning listen as well. And he said that, you know, part of the re, you know, the people who are leaving the negative comments are always going to be fewer but they're, you know, they're basically, they're not doing anything. And the reason you don't get all of this love is because all of the people who would be supportive of you are busy being successful doing things and they don't have the time to, to come back to you and give you the, the confidence you might want to be looking for. So the only people left to say anything are the people who aren't doing anything. So uh, not to dismiss people, but if they're not successful and they have all this time in the world just to pull people down, trying to bring, you know, misery loves company. They're trying to bring you to the miserable side why pay any attention to what it is? And a lot of times those people are anonymous. So there's even more. They won't say this stuff to you, let alone over a virtual site with the, their face and their name. They do it from a virtually from an anonymous account. Um, so like that's another thing to take consideration. What is this coming through? I, I liked your comment about processing the comment, and I put this down in my notes. You know, sometimes there's a you know every every attack or every every comment towards you usually has a little bit of truth to it. And it might be buried under all this ugliness and junk, but maybe there is some truth. And if you can get mature enough to get past the hurt and say, well, is there any truth to this comment and find that little nugget of truth, even if it's really small, then that helps you grow as a person and then just dismiss the rest of it. But it's not easy to do. I, I know some of these guys, and I assume they're guys because only, only men have time to, to be hurtful the way that some of these trolls are, going into advisors who are choosing to grow their business successfully on social media and pulling their ADVs and trying to discredit them because of the amount of assets that shows on there, not understanding their business model. But for some people, that hurts because they're just genuinely nice people trying to do a good job. This is how they try to grow the business. And all of a sudden, you've got somebody they don't know pulling out and trying to discredit what it is they do. Um, so I think that you had a lot of great things in there. I just wanted to pull those couple things out and re reiterate those things. Yeah, I mean, it's – look – we know, especially on FinSwit, there's a lot of anonymous accounts, right? And so you, you literally have no idea, like what direction they're trying to go with it, right? Because people will post some wild stuff and say some wild things that you're just like, man, you would never say this to my face, right? I'm not a small guy, but I'm like, I like, I'm, I'm not the, I'm not Shaq, right? But I'm bigger than average, right? So there's no way I know you will say this to my face. And, and people will do that, right? And at the same time, within there, like, there are people who are just natural contrarians, no matter what you're going to say. I think there's a lesson in listening to those, right? So, like, I don't want to hit the default and say, well, 100% of everything that comes in is going to be negative. I, I don't want to say that. And the reason why is because a negative comment, like you said, might have some truth to it. And then you might have to take a step back and go, oh, shit, I didn't think about that. Right? There's a guy on Twitter who's a, he's a uh, lawyer. Um, and he always, like, posts these, like, hustle Twitter versus LLC Twitter, like, screenshot posts. And they, they do, like, basically March Madness 64 out, right, to figure out who's going to take. It's like hot takes, right? And one day he had one of my tweets on there. And so I just, I, I respectfully was just like, hey, man, why, why is my tweet on there? At least at me, right? Like, so I can see it. And he was like, well, you know, I think it's a hard stance. Particularly, I was talking about, I think everyone should be a homeowner. And he was like, this is a hard stance. Everyone shouldn't. And I was like, and I heard him out. And he had a legitimate, like, understanding. I said, you know what? Actually, you're right. That was a hard stance, Right. But those things, though, that type of constructive like behavior doesn't occur a lot because whenever you're just going to label everyone as a troll, well, unfortunately, what I've learned over time is that there are anonymous people on Twitter 
who were extremely successful, right? Because they reached out to me like, oh, yeah, I do this. And I'm like, oh, my God, you like you only have 200 followers. How, like how, how successful are you? Like, that's why I'm like, I, I don't know if you can judge a book by its cover. And we should never judge a book by its cover. Now, the ridiculous comments like, hell, I know, man, I said something about Tesla and the zombie apocalypse came down on me. Right. For a whole weekend, my mentions were just out of control. And so in those situations, when it's overwhelming, yeah, you got to shut that down. But in general, I think there is something to learn. But at, like, honestly, I think going into it with like a fucking mentality, because that way you can right off the bat be like, you know, what, this isn't going to bother me. And then if there is a nugget of truth in there, I'll take it and learn from it. But other than that, I don't really care. Because at the end of the day, what's the what's the odds that you're going to meet someone from there who is anonymous, giving you BS, right? The people who are going to provide value to you are going to come back to you every single time, are going to try and interact with you, right? And they're trying to form that dialogue with you. They're trying to talk to you. Now, if it's the same troll over and over again, I would just personally, I would just flat out say, what the hell is your fucking problem? Right. Like, what do you what is so wrong about me that you need to do this? And I've done that on Twitter. I will send people a message like, hey, man, what like what did I do to deserve that comment? Tell me and just let and just hear them out. Some people, they back down very fast. Right. And it, it kind of sucks that that's what we have to go through. But you don't get to 100,000 subscribers without putting yourself out there. Right. You're like Justin Costelli doesn't become a household name without putting yourself out there. Right. Like uh, Jason Wink, I love like he's super successful. Well, he doesn't get that successful. He doesn't put himself out there. And I had to learn that. And I learned that from Jamie Hopkins. I learned that from Jason Wink. I learned that from Tyrone. Like if you don't put yourself out there, like people aren't like you got to accept the good and the bad. And believe it or not, those trolling comments actually tell you that you're doing good. Right. Right. Um, well, you know, we're talking about we're focusing on social media, uh, but let's. Not all of that happens on social media. Some oh. of it happens, you know, in person. Some of it may not necessarily be trolling, but it is disapproval or doubt from, you know, family and friends closer, maybe not your inner inner circle, but closer circle people that maybe it hurts more because of the relationship with them. How, like, how do you balance that out? How, how do you, you know, and again, I'm thinking of the lens of somebody who is deciding to, to change their life and go down a path that's going to ultimately lead to greater happiness and more fulfillment for them and their family. And sometimes to deviate from that path, maybe you're disappointing your parents or, or other people. Like, how do you kind of channel that and say, okay, I'm doing this for my happiness. My happiness doesn't depend on their happiness and still be able to be okay to be able to process that. Man, you know, I, I struggled with that for a long time, right? The day, a week after I graduated the Naval Academy, somebody very close to me uh, was just casually like, man, you know, I'm surprised you even graduated. I didn't expect you to make it one week, right? And I'm just like, man, I, I, I fucking worked my ass off, right? I, I, there was blood sweat and tears getting through this, and that's the comment you have for me, right? Not that I'm proud of you, X, Y, and Z, but a smirk and saying, oh, yeah, you know, I'm surprised you even made it. And then, like, I, I've heard, like, my, my nickname before I became a doctor was Doc. Right. I got that nickname from a basketball coach who didn't believe I was ever going to become a doctor. He didn't believe in it. Right. He gave me that nickname as a joke. They were laughing at me behind my back. Right. And so, like, when I found that out, I was like, I, and this was somebody that I thought had my back. Right. It hurt. So then the, the thing about success is the more the higher you go and the more you go along, that's going to happen more and more, right? The, it's going to be like, it may not be in your face, but it might be like, hey, man, you know, um, I don't know if you should do that, but you can go ahead and do it yourself. Uh, but I think that's a bad idea, but it may work out for you, right? There's no good info. Like, how do you interpret that, right? And then the minute something goes wrong, they're like, well, I told him. I freaking told him he shouldn't have done it, right? And so what I realized is like, the higher I went, the more that was happening. And I realized that I'm the only one that looks like me occupying those spaces. And I was just like, fuck it. I'm done. I'm not listening to it. Right? Because I got here by doing 
what like was in my gut, in my heart, and trying to take care of people the correct way and doing the correct thing and working hard every day, I'm still doing that. Those principles haven't changed. The only thing that's changed is you. But those comments are still the same. It's still people trying to pull you back, right? Nobody wants is going to want you to outshine them. That's just a reality, right? Think about playing high school basketball. Everybody wants to get a scholarship, right? But so sometimes they're like, man, I don't really want to pass this guy the ball. I know he's not going to pass it back because he wants to shoot all the time, right? The hardest thing to do is just to stay on the path, like play the right way. And it's the same thing in life. Like you, there's things that got you to where you are. Don't change that, right? It, regardless of all the BS comments that go on, don't change that. And I'm a defensive person by nature. That's how I got here, right? And so I, I had to learn over time to tailor that back and tone that back. And I'm still trying to get better at it, right? Because you'll hear some stuff and be like, what the hell? Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's, that, that actually hurt. And you're going to want to lash out. The biggest thing is like, I'm trying to learn to take a deep breath and be like, okay, chill. So like if, when it comes to online stuff or if, it, if I hear a comment from somebody, I don't respond right away. What I do is I send it to a third party. And I go, hey, man, I just heard this. What do you think? And I let that person decide how I should react. If they go, man, you know, actually, that's messed up. You should probably react to that. Then I'll say something. If they're like, yeah, that's not a big deal. I just move on. And that's what I found worked for me. Because, again, there's if you're trying to do anything that is abnormal or considered like, like putting yourself out there, People aren't going to support that outside your inner circle, right? Because they're not going to see the work and the, the, that you put in, the frustration that you have. They're, they're not going to see any of that. It's an easy thing to be like, nah, I don't think that's going to work. Mm-hmm. I also think some of the hate comes from the fact that maybe you're doing something other people wish they had the courage to go do them. So, you know, they, maybe they in, inside they want to put themselves out there, but they're so afraid or they've been conditioned not to that seeing you step outside and take that risk really makes them mad because they, they can't do it. So that if they can't do it, they don't want you to do it. So they're going to throw rocks at you and try to bring you down. Misery loves company, man. Mm -hmm. And that's just the reality. Misery loves company. I mean, by nature, we are pack animals, right? Humans like to go in packs. When you're trying to do something that's out there, like, and like be something that other people can't envision, you're by yourself. That's a lonely feeling that like you feel vulnerable and the rest of the crowd is over here. They're like, well, that that's the ugly duckling, right? Well, it turns out you might be a freaking swan and you just don't realize it. And it's going to be trying at times. It's going to, it's going to suck. But like in order to get to that next step, you got to just tune it out, man. Mm -hmm. I I think it's important to hear it, but tune it out. So as we get close to wrapping up, I, I always want to try to have the podcast give something that the listeners can take or work on or try. So, um, I mean, obviously, kind of what we talked about already, being able to just dismiss it, take a little bit of it, have a third party kind of help you decipher whether or not you should react. But do you have anything else that would help people that maybe maybe lack the confidence that you or I have? And not in a bad way. I don't know where the the self-confidence I have has come from over my life, but I've always had it. And I know there are certain people who don't. I think it's easier when you're confident in yourself and you believe in yourself to be able to get through some of those rocks that might get thrown at you. But if confidence is not that strong point quite yet, you're building it. What are some other things that uh, people could do to help them focus on themselves, realize that you know people don't really hate you. It's something about you that they see as a reflection of themselves that they hate in themselves. And so they, again, come out at you. So what are some things that people could do that, that are a little bit maybe beginner status towards tuning this hate out and moving forward? I, I would say right off the bat, just know your why and why you're doing something right. I mean, it, it all comes down to that, right? Like if, if I, like in medicine, we have all these algorithms and things, right? And I, one of the things I always say, or something that's taught to me, is like, like patients don't read books, right? So like that algorithm you're following is, that's the idealized version of life. But we know life throws curveballs, right? And so if you know, and my big thing is treating every patient like they're my family, 
if it's what I would want from my family, then guess what? I'm headed down the right path. And so there's going to be people who will be like, well, I wouldn't do that because this is what the such and such says, right? You can't go wrong treating somebody humanely and like, but that's my why, right? Why do I do this? Because my mom died tragically and I don't want other people feeling that way. So I, I, when I look at a patient, that's my family. I don't want to feel that anymore. How do I not feel that? I make sure they're taken care of. So I know my why. Why am I doing this? And I have reminders of those things. And whether it's walking in the house and seeing my kids, seeing my wife, like I have reminders of those things every day. And that why keeps me focused. Like the, the thing that people don't uh, would not guess about me is I struggle with my self-confidence, man. I, I do. I'm just like everybody else. I struggle big time, right? It's, it, it's something that limited me as a basketball player in college. It probably limited me in track as well. I struggle majorly. Even today, I struggle with stuff. I, and the only reason why I keep pushing forward is I'm just like, hey, you know what? Actually, I'm, I'm just going to go a little bit. I'm going I'm to push a little bit more and be a little bit more courageous, right? I didn't want to do those videos at all, man. Jamie and Jason kept telling me over and over and over. And I finally said, okay, I'm going to try it. And then some people watched it, and I was like, oh, some people are actually watching this. Let me try it again the next day. Some people watched it again. And then I got a little bit more, a little bit more. And if you notice, I, don't, I try not to even look at the camera. Because if I look at the camera, I'm probably going to turn it off. And I just talk, man. And I'm, I'm literally sharing what's in my head. And that's just how I do it, man. I know my why. My, the biggest thing for me is trying to solve that, right, and, and push towards that. And I'm willing to accept the BS that comes with it. I think that's a perfect thought to end on because if you know your why and your why is that important, pulling back passions and kind of creating that life that you want, if it's that important to you, then the comments you get from the outside, especially if they carry no merit, should be easy to get to get, dismiss it. It doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt. And it's perfectly okay to be bothered by it. I remember... Luckily, I don't get too much heat from the trolls. I think it's because I don't take too many confrontational state or stances and go after people. And I'd like to think it's because, like, what I say does maybe I'm not doing enough because I'm not getting the hate. But I remember when some would come, and it was almost like I was too naive to realize they were trolls because I would try to dialogue back with them and learn more about why they said that. I remember one exchange where the the, the guy was saying something about a planning technique I recommended, how it wasn't right. So I'm like trying to get him to tell me like, well, what is, what's right? What are you doing that's working for your clients? Because if I don't know, I want to know about it. And obviously he never had an answer because that was not what he came to Twitter to do. Um, and I just realized that, you know, if they really are just trying to tear you down, then you can't reason with them. And the dialogue is just going to be one-sided and they're just going to kind of continue to go after you. So you just kind of have to, to go that way. Um, so I'm lucky I don't have to deal with it a lot, but when there was, it, it bothered me. And there was a couple of trolls that, I mean, ultimately, and trolls, just people that are not pleasant, that have no purpose other than trying to tear you down, that I would end up blocking. But every once in a while, I would go check and see, did they say something about me? And I, it bothered me that I did that. It bothered me that they had that headspace, that they were occupying my headspace because that space in my brain that they occupy could go towards something way more productive or to positive memories or positive engagements, not this negative. And eventually I just kind of, I realized that, the, hey, like even though you're, they're not showing up in their feed, they still own you a little bit. And that bothered me. And that was enough to know that I'm not letting negativity own any part of, my, of me. So I got to dismiss it and not even worry about it anymore. But um, I also don't think using the block or the mute is a bad thing, it's especially if once you identify that the, the individual you're trying to, to cut out of your life is really never bringing any value, it's only to tear down. And there are individuals that if you were to look at their, their stream, they never offer anything other than it's just spewing hate. I say, get rid of that. Don't block people because they disagree with you. Like, that's good. Uh, but if it's just hate, there's, I don't have any time for that. There's no reason to have that show up in my feed. And another thing I was going to say is when you engage with those folks, that puts them on your feed and gives you that gives them access to your network. So now you're helping spread their message to other people. And that's another way I look at it is if it's just negativity, like I don't want negativity coming to people on my feed directly or indirectly through me. So I'm just going to shut it off at that point. So 
I think knowing your why and knowing your purpose and your passion and why you're doing it should give you confidence to stick with it no matter what other people are saying. Um, the other little tip I do is if I feel like, like let's say I can't use a third party, I'll type out the response and then delete it and mm-hmm. just get rid of the emotion, yeah. right? Because majority of it is just that initial emotion needs to go somewhere. That energy needs to go somewhere. So type the response and then don't mm-hmm. send it mm-hmm. and then move on with your day. And I, I personally, I realized there were people I just did not enjoy engaging with. Mm-hmm. And so I put them on mute, man, mm-hmm. or I blocked them. If they came after me too many times, like, and it, it wasn't like a disagreement. It's like legitimately like malicious coming after me. It was just like, it's not worth my energy. My day is like, I do this to help other people. Like this isn't helping me. It's just causing stress. Like, okay, mm-hmm. fine. Move on. Social media should be fun. Right. Yep. Sounds good. Well, hey, I, I know you got a busy day. I appreciate you squeezing me in after surgery and uh, being a part of this. I do think that there will be an opportunity to, to ask you to come back on again, maybe tell more of your story and how that ties into your pursuit and what it is that you do. And like you mentioned, why you do what you do, like diving further into that, kind of how that got you, got you there. So um, I appreciate you taking the time, Doc. Um, always good to catch up. Keep on doing the videos. I agree. You should do more. Who cares if you don't look? Just get it out there. Uh, because honestly, the, the algorithms like video more. So your message is going to be heard by more people by doing video rather than typing. So appreciate you joining us on our pursuit, sharing a little bit about your pursuit. We'll have you back. Um, and everybody, thanks for listening. And we'll see you all in the next episode.